Hello everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today we will learn about the critical differences between SQL and NoSQL platforms. That said, if these are the type of videos you'd like to watch, then hit that like and subscribe buttons and the bell icon to get notified. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. Just for a quick info, if you want to upskill yourself and master SQL for data analytics and land your dream job or grow in your career, then you must explore Simply Learn SQL certification course. Simply Learn offers an industry recognized SQL training and certification program for aspiring SQL developers and data analysts. Through this program, you will gain knowledge and work ready expertise in skills like real world problem solving, data analytics, MySQL workbench, problem solving, and over a dozen others. That's not all. You also get the opportunity to gain an engaging learning experience featuring demo sessions and real world examples. You will gain dedicated live sessions by faculty of industry experts in top tier product companies along with academicians from top universities. After completing these courses, thousands of learners have transitioned into a data analytics role as a fresher or a SQL developer as a fresher or moved on to a higher paying job and profile. If you are passionate about making your career in this field, then make sure to check out the link in the pinned comment and description box below. Without further ado, let's get started. SQL databases provide robustness and consistency through structured data schemes ideal for complex queries and transactions. On the other hand, the NoSQL databases. So they offer flexibility and scalability by ensuring the structured approach of SQL databases, allowing for easier management of unstructured data. Now it's obvious that both these platforms have a huge demand for their specific needs and requirements. Now the major question for today's session is, which one of these two has the higher demand and best suitable for most of the use cases? And what are the critical differences between the both? And which one of these differences that you need to discuss and consider before getting started with a SQL based project? Right? So that said, let's get started by understanding each one of these and popular database management tools and the critical differences between the both. Starting with the agenda for today's session. Firstly, we will discuss major companies which are dependent on SQL developers and which are actively hiring SQL as well as NoSQL developers. Next, we will discuss the salaries offered to a certified SQL and NoSQL developer. And after that, we will understand what exactly is SQL, then the popular SQL databases. Followed by that, we will understand what is NoSQL with a brief uh, introduction to both. And then what are the popular NoSQL databases which are being currently used in the IT industry. And next, we will close with the most important part of today's session, which happens to be the critical differences between the both SQL and NoSQL databases. Having said that, I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. Now let's proceed with the companies hiring SQL and NoSQL developers. Now SQL and NoSQL databases are the most popular databases which are currently actively used in the IT industry. Some of the major companies, product-based companies or service-based companies which are dependent on SQL and NoSQL databases are as follows. Major B, The Man, The Big Four and many more like PepsiCo, Accenture, Wells Fargo, Cape Gemini, Netflix and many more like IBM, Walmart are solely dependent on database management systems. And these are the companies which are ready to pay huge compensation for the certified developers who know SQL or no SQL. Now, let's also discuss about the huge paychecks they're offering to the certified developers in SQL and no SQL. So if you are in America and if you know database management, then they are ready to offer you the salaries from $90,000 to $100,000 per annum if you are a beginner and if you're an intermediate candidate, let's say with about one to two years of experience, you can expect salaries ranging from $100,000 to $110,000 per annum. And if you are an experienced, highly experienced candidate with about four or five or more experience, then you can expect salaries ranging from $120,000 to $130,000 or even more 
based on the company you're working with and on the project you're working for. And if you're in India, and if you're a beginner in SQL development or NoSQL development, ranging from 3 lakhs to 6 lakhs per annum, and if you're an intermediate candidate, let's say 2 to 3 years of experience, you can expect salaries ranging from 6 lakhs to 8 lakhs per annum. And if you're a highly experienced candidate, let's say more than 5 years of experience, you can expect around 8 lakhs to 12 lakhs per annum as a minimum or average salary. And the number can go as high as 40 lakhs to 15 lakhs per annum based on the company you're working with or based on the technology, let's say like Oracle, etc., or on the project you're working for, right? So based on that, your number can go as high as 35 to 40 lakhs per annum. So that's the importance of SQL. So it's a good time for you to get certified as a SQL developer or a NoSQL developer. Now, let's proceed with the next part of today's session where we will be understanding what exactly is SQL. So, what is SQL? So, there are many definitions to SQL. Some say it is a tool. Some say it is a programming language. But as a full form for it, SQL stands as an abbreviation for structured query language, majorly proving that it is basically a language. Now, it is a domain-specific language used to manage data, especially, so we have uh, DML, DDL, right? So, especially related to database management system. It is helpful for handling structured data by incorporating relationships among the entities, what we call also as tables, right? So, primary key, foreign key, using which you can establish a successful relation between them and try to join both the tables and extract data. Now, let's also discuss some of the features of these SQL data tables. So SQL will help you keep track of your transactions and SQL will help you with data loading from different sources. Apart from that, SQL offers top-notch security and then it also helps you with data transformation and user-friendly user interfaces. Now, we have a brief understanding of what exactly is SQL. Now, let's proceed with understanding some popular SQL databases which are currently being used in the IT sector. So, some of the popular databases of SQL that are actively used in the IT sector are Oracle, MongoDB, PostgreSQL, Microsoft SQL Server, Azure, Redis, Elasticsearch, MySQL, and many more. Now, let's proceed with what exactly is NoSQL. So, there are uh, many concepts of NoSQL. Some say it is NoSQL or some others say that it is not only SQL meaning it can perform more than what just SQL can do, right? So the definition that we have for NoSQL is, NoSQL is an approach to database design that focuses on providing a mechanism for storage and retrieval of data that is modeled in means of other than tabular relationships used in relational databases. So as we said that, SQL can manage data which is only present in data tables under named columns and rows right apart from that we cannot do anything but in sql you can rely on that for handling non-structured or unstructured data as well apart from just handling the data tables it can do a lot more than that it can also help you manage the non-structured or unstructured data like media photos and everything now let's also understand some of the popular features of nosql so nosql databases are easily scalable and the, you can expect high performance through NoSQL databases. And similar to SQL, NoSQL is also capable of offering high-end security and replication of data or shifting data from one place to another is also very easy using NoSQL. And lastly, NoSQL databases can be updated very easily without any hassle. Now, let's proceed with understanding some of the popular databases based on NoSQL platform. So, some of the popular NoSQL databases are RavenDB, MongoDB, yes, MongoDB can also work with SQL as well as NoSQL. Followed by that, we have Apache Cassandra, one of the popular databases created by Facebook. And next, we have DynamoDB from Amazon, KajDB, Apache HBase, which is also from Apache, and Neo4j, and also Redis. Now that we have a comfortable understanding of what exactly is a NoSQL database, its features, and some popular databases which are currently being used in the IT industry, so we have a comfortable understanding of both SQL as well as NoSQL database.
basis. He now calls for the major part of today's session, which is the critical differences between so SQL versus no SQL. So the first difference. So as we discussed, SQL deals with named columns and rows, and the data is stored in a tabular form, like an Excel spreadsheet. So SQL supports the relational database management system. On the other hand, NoSQL supports both relational as well as it can support non-relational database management system. So basically, it tries to function on the fundamentals of non-relational database management system. Now, the second point of difference is data storage. So SQL chooses to store data under named rows and columns in a table format. On the other hand, NoSQL prefers to store data in the form of collections and documents. So what are collections and documents in NoSQL EPS? So those are just some interchangeable data formats which are human and machine readable. So those are the files which store data in the form of JSON and BSON formats which are readable by machine and humans. Now let's proceed with the third point of discussion. So the point three is SQL follows asset properties but NoSQL will not or maybe need not to follow asset properties. So what are asset properties in SQL? So basically, asset is a full form for atomicity, consistency, and isolation, and durability. So first, let's understand what is A. A is atomicity, where each statement is a transaction, right? And it is treated as a single unit. Either the entire statement is executed or none of them is executed. Next, consistency, ensuring that the transactions only made changes to the tables in a predefined and predictable ways. Transaction consistency ensures that corruption or errors in your data do not create unintended consequences for the integrity of your table. Next one is I, isolation. So when multiple users are reading or writing from the same table all at once, isolation of their transactions ensures that Concurrent transactions do not interfere or affect one another. Now, the last one, D for durability, ensures that changes to your data made by successfully executed transactions will be saved even in the event of system failure. So, these are the absolute properties which SQL abides and follows, but no SQL may or may not or need not to follow these asset properties. Now, the fourth point, which is about the complex joins and queries. Now, SQL supports the types of joins, maybe the inner join, other join, led join, outer join, and uh, cross join, etc. And it can also support some complex queries like CDE and uh, sub queries, etc. But NoSQL, on the other hand, does not support these joins and complex queries. Now, the last point of today's discussion between the both. So, SQL is dependent on vertical scaling, and NoSQL is dependent on horizontal scaling. Now, what is vertical scaling and horizontal scaling? So let's say you have a database and you are managing some website or something like that, and you have a bunch of requests which are additional requests on your current request. Let's say you have 100 requests today, and tomorrow you're expecting to have about 120 queries, right? In such scenario, if you are using a NoSQL database, then you can just expand the network. Let's say you have five bases today to handle those 100 requests and tomorrow you have additional 20, right? In such scenario, what you do is just add a NoSQL database, one extra. Five, you will be having one more dedicated for that extra 20 queries. That's called horizontal scaling. Just add another database to your existing network. But on the other hand, when you come to SQL, it is dependent on vertical scaling. Let's say you are having just one database to handle 100 queries. And tomorrow you get an additional 40 or 50 queries. In such scenario, you cannot just add an extra database. What you have to do is you may have to add some extra juice to your server, right? Let's say your server or database can have about 100 GB of uh, processing capability. You need to increase that processing capability to 150 GB. Basically, you're upgrading your hardware. You are not just adding more hardware, you are upgrading it. In such scenario, it is mentioned or it is called as vertical scaling. 
So SQL is dependent on vertical scaling and NoSQL is dependent on horizontal scaling for additional requests. So these are the top five differences between SQL and NoSQL. So before you get started with our database project, these are the five differences that you need to consider and understand on this particular project. And that brings us to the end of this session on the differences between SQL and NoSQL. Should you have any queries regarding any of the topics covered in this session, or if you require the resources that we use in the session like Pivotal, etc., please feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our different experts will be happy to resolve all your queries at the earliest. Until next time, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.